Good evening. This is the Elliott Wave update for the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P 500 for Monday, January the 23rd, 2023. Well, again today, we had basically the same type of action, the same type of movement as we saw on uh, Friday, where the market just kind of plowed higher and we got sideways, excuse me, on uh, from Globex last night, and then they just plowed higher one more time today. And again, they did it under light volume. You would think that with the size of the move, and if there was total conviction from all the market participants that the volume, it would be going up on heavy volume, but it did not. Now, depending on the stock, and let's just take a quick peek, Tesla, heavy volume. Tesla reports tomorrow, but heavy volume. Who else did have heavy volume? Apple, not bad, but heavy volume for Apple is over 100 million. 81, not bad. And if we're coming, Amazon, good volume, but barely was higher. And coming down, Microsoft, our other big player, average. That's average for them. Meta, average. And these were gigantic moves. Netflix, 15 million. I would say that's average. NVIDIA, average. To maybe a little bit high on NVIDIA side. Nice move in NVIDIA today. Now, coming back over here to the NASDAQ, again, it was the type of trading exactly the same as Friday, except now they're setting up their trades for Friday, where the next expiration falls. So we start to see the premium, and all these premium trades get put on Monday that will expire on Friday. And if the market continues to go up past the strikes, things will start to happen. If it drops and goes through the strikes, things will start to happen. Adjustments will have to be made. So this picture is not quite over just yet. Now, yes, the market broke above 11,760, which is the level it needed to for me to shift the labeling. Now, before I get any comments about, oh, there I go again, it is not me. I take all of my cues in terms of what the counts are and what the market I perceive is doing from the market. So it's not like I'm deciding. And if somebody has a better idea on what all of this really is and what it's representing and what these moves are, please tell me. Give me the details. Take a snapshot of, of, of your screen with your labeling on it and send it to me and let me see it. If I welcome other people's count, I welcome other people's views. I find it to be very important because number one, it makes me think. It keeps me thinking about missing something. Is there something else going on? So I just want to be clear on how we should continue. And I want to keep an open and revolving door for people to make comments. Um, right now, we continue to look at this. Let's just briefly take a trip over to the four hour because we can see the whole deal. One, two, one. Remember, if you studied Elliot, Robert Prechter has written about it. R.N. Elliott himself wrote about it, that second waves do have the potential that they could retrace nearly all of wave one. They just can't exceed it, but they can retrace nearly all of it, which is why I continue to tell you, if this is where wave one down began, that's 12,337. That's what the NASDAQ has to do before I shift where, where this count would then become invalidated. 
in terms of being a one and a two. Right now, even this is still a one and a possible two. Now, if you're feeling that, oh, this is too bullish, this is this, and you're going to leave me a comment, tell me why. Why do you think it's so bullish? Why do you find that this is the way of the way it's going to go? Why is it doing it? Right now, I think it's a premium play. I think it's a huge setup. I continue to get filtrations through from analysts at big firms, Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, these big firms that are basically saying that they're continuing to look for an erosion in the earnings and that the gap between earnings and forward guidance is widening versus is getting cleaner, it's widening, it's getting bigger. So we're going to find out because we have Tesla tomorrow, we have Microsoft on Wednesday. And those are the big Titan stocks for today. That's going to, I think, start setting the stage. But where did we see the bulk of today's activity? In Apple, AMAT, AMD, Google a little bit, but not all that much. Meta, Microsoft, Netflix, NVIDIA, and Tesla. So you can be selective and it produces a giant move. But if I look at it here, my longer term charts, my longer or larger time frame charts truly haven't changed. Now I will go to the daily chart and take a look here. And everybody wants to talk about, well, it is breaking. But it's got all that to do yet. Now, right now, even on my daily, it reached where this wave is equal to this wave at 11,974. What's next up? 11,000, or excuse me, 12,131. And then we got the 200 sitting right there with it. Then we have a channel lined right there above it. Now, if it gets up there, it is going to break and force a restructure. But then if <clears throat> what I think I continue to have trouble with is what is all of this threes and three and then a five? So this is why I leave it the way it is. I got to let the market tell me versus me trying to tell the market. I never am going to be able to do that. So, and again, I want to make sure that everybody understands. I know people leave in the comments saying, you continue to tell us you're a day trader. It's like, that's right, I am. And so most of my trades today, we're on the long side towards the end of the day when we finally got some sellers that came in then you know i i shorted it but they're they're day trades they're not position trades i am not positioning i think positioning right now you have to stick to the longer time frame or the larger time frames your daily your weekly when you start to see changes there it will filter you will then be able to make your change. But if you're basing your long-term position on an hourly chart, that's going to present you with more problems. Also, please, when you're trading, if you're entering into the market, trigger. What is your trigger? Step one. Step two, what is the goal of the trade? What are you looking for in this trade? If it's moving to a moving average, if it's moving to a FIB, it, wherever you think it's going to go, that's your target. Third, where are you going to get out when the trade becomes invalidated? And that is the most important one, because you're not going to let something run against you and get annihilated. That's what this kind of market will do. Now, the same thing, in my view, is going to happen when this thing decides to turn and it's all over and it starts to come back down. It's going to get messy and it's going to get ugly and it's going to be a shock to the market. 
because it just kind of continued to walk itself higher. Powerful hourly bars, but it walked itself higher. It didn't just go duh, 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 and run up. It walked, but it's going to run to the downside when it's all done. And we may get a taste of that tomorrow after the close when Tesla reports. So we may have one more day of this and they maybe they'll take it up another 200 points. So we're sitting at 12,100. It, it's going to be a nail biter. Because to, to tell you the truth, what I'm really feeling is that it can shift over to, to where this is the A and then this we're going to work on the B wave. And the B wave is going to end up right here, not all the way up here, not at 43, 44, 4,500 in the S&P. And this thing is going to come blasting out of it. And if that happens, trust me, it's going to be a C wave. It's going to be devastating. Because again, I keep looking for that now, but I have to, I'm on hold. I'm like, well, I don't know, because it's not really, it is not turning and heading lower. It started to, but now we're doing it in the opposite direction. And just as the NASDAQ does, which is why counting can be very confusing right now, they do these blasts higher on numbers. Oh, we loved it. No, we don't. Oh, we loved it. No, we don't. It continues to play out in that fashion. So right now, where are the sellers? Did anybody else notice today there was just a sincere absence of sellers again? We saw it on Friday. We saw it again today. When that occurs on light volume, I'm like, somebody's waiting for something and somebody's going to get hurt in the process. So for tomorrow... We do have resistance at 12,144, 145, and then we've got the the uh, 200 EMA sitting up there. We've got resistance just below it. We have still, again, resistance at 11,975. So it's got to go blasting through that, which it might, it might, or it turns. And, <clears throat> excuse me, if this is done and we start to get some stronger downside, I think it'd go really fast because again, it's going to be massive change all over again. Everybody reinstituting their short positions, but tomorrow allow for upside. Hopefully the volume comes back. Hopefully two-way trade, stronger two-way trade will come back. We'll have to wait and see either way. Me personally, I will be trading the price action and I will be trading not necessarily setting up a trade, directional trade, or with a directional bias. I'm going to follow the price action, and I will have a trigger, a target, and a place where it becomes invalidated. Okay, over in the S&P. Same story. Now, here's, well, let me put in, let me go, that's on the daily. Well, we start on the daily, and then I'll pull in my fibs. Here on the daily, we closed above that. 200. On the daily chart, that puts the S&P in a positive frame. We're kind of getting ready to, to break above 41.16, 15 right there, makes 41.80, which was on a push, all the stronger. If I take this over and I look at the line chart, it still can be A, B, and then one, two, three, four, and then a five, and we're finishing this up. Three would go over here, actually. Let me just go ahead and move that over a little bit. So come on, relax. All right, put it right there to get it out of that way. Um, So we can put the five, and I'm still going to be looking for it. And right now, we got 4,100 in terms of on a close only. We have 4,180 on that candle. So, but I'm going to be paying very, very close attention to this, this market. Technically, yep, strong upside, strong upside. Fundamentally, not sure what they're up to. So, again, 
now that we've closed above that daily 200, it does change the picture. Now, what I need to see again is the four and the eight to go across it, the 20 and the 50 to come up across it. And that would confirm it. That would just seal the deal in that. Nope, we're going to go up and we're going to go up and we're going to go up. Now, I'm not being a denier of anything either, by the way. I see what they're doing. I see that the markets are moving up strongly, but I don't have any reason to change how I'm viewing it in terms of my daily chart, my weekly chart. The hourly chart's presenting its hassles, I got to tell you. But the market is fluid. My count has to be fluid in order to be more reflective of what the market's actually telling us. Now, we could do different styles to put bands and all kinds of other things in here. But I prefer to try to keep it as sim simple as I can so that it's clear. But there are other technical things that can be added to a chart. And I welcome that if people want to share. So I'm going to go down back to this hourly chart and now put up another layer. No, that's got to move. I'm not sure why that ended up over there. I just got to come way over here. Actually, I'm going to put it right there. Um, and I'm going to put some fibs for this fifth, which are going to be probably all wasted by now. But we'll see. Yeah. So both the S&P and the NASDAQ kind of got to their 100% where this equals this. Came back down and sold off very nicely for a while there. But then they buy it back up into the close. And simply because of the way the orders are scheduled and the buy on close orders, et cetera, et cetera. So what do we have above 4043? We have 4050 to 4067, 65, and then 4076. And then, then we're heading up. We start to start to break here. Yes, we will be heading up towards 4100. Is that, again, what I'm expecting? Not necessarily. But I certainly will no longer be surprised should that be what it wants to do. And, and again, I don't think I would be changing my outlook for a longer, a little bit longer term or a little bit larger picture that once this is done, it's going to be the swiftest kick that we've seen in a long time. So we're right at that cusp right now, folks. That's where we're sitting. But tomorrow, continue to leave upside. Downside, again, once it begins, it should just go. Buyers will be done. Sellers finally can move in, and they're going to start to pile on. And we should start to see it break below A, which was resistance on the way up, is support on the way back down, and start breaking below is moving averages, lickety split. Hourly chart remains favorable to the upside. Even the hourly 200 starting to turn and move a little bit higher. The 50 is higher. The 20 is higher. Not vertical, but sloping nicely to the upside. All right, that's where I'm going to leave it for right now. Tomorrow, um, let me just double check. On uh, we have numbers PM, PMI composite flash at 9:45 a.m. and we'll see purchasing managers index give us a little flash on what they think so we'll see the bigger numbers come out on Thursday with durable goods GDP international trade and goods and jobless claims Thursday will be a big day Wednesday we have Microsoft Tuesday we have Tesla okay. Have a great evening. Have a great trading day tomorrow. The next update will be on Tuesday, the 24th.